Jonathan Rattel, since 2013, you've been, since February 2013, you're head of uh, Kosovo Special Prosecution, and since March 2010, you've been head of Organized Crime Department in Spurk. Recently, uh, Spurk, the Kosovo Prosecution uh, Office, has come out with very interesting cases. Um, Oliver Ivanovic in the war crimes field and uh, Ukrgova, the son of former Kosovo president who's accused of buying off about 200 visas from the Italian embassy uh, as, as late as December 2013. How do you see the future of SPERC? This is what you've been doing recently. Do you see similar cases coming up in the future? Well, I think the first thing you have to understand is that SBRK or SPERC actually belongs to Kosovo. I think probably the greatest uh, achievement is the cooperation between both internationals and national authorities in devising, first of all, the law on SBRK which is domestic law, it's national law, it belongs to Kosovo. But it was drafted in cooperation with internationals because there was a recognition that the legislation needed to be updated. But the law in SPRK basically states that there is an exclusive jurisdiction of serious crimes, organized crime, war crimes, terrorism, and other offenses that are to be conducted solely by SBRK. Interesting that you speak about the cooperation with, immediately co cooperation with the local institutions in Kosovo. Tell me, what's your relationship with the Ministry of Justice? How well do you cooperate? We have a very good relationship with the Ministry of Justice. You have to understand that SPRK is just not a national institution under the general jurisdiction and the general guidance of the state prosecutor, but it also has authority as it reaches out to other countries. And the Ministry of Justice is extremely important to us because they have a section called the International Legal Cooperation Unit. That is the ability of SPRK to reach out to other countries and to speak to them and cooperate, as many countries do, on legal matters. So and that's what is very your relationship important. with Ismet Kabashi, the chief prosecutor? Excellent. Excellent. I can phone Mr. Kabashi. I can walk into his office at any time. I am one of his agents. You have to understand that law of SPRK says the head of SPRK and all the SPRK prosecutors belong to Mr. Kabashi. Tell me then, if you have such a good relationship with both of these institutions and heads of them. Why are um, the Minister of Justice and Mr. Kaboshi working as we speak now in Brussels to limit the international prosecutors basically independence by insisting that uh, they want to be the heads and control what international prosecutors do. They are doing this in Brussels as the future uh, statute and, and uh, makeup of SPERC uh, will look like in Kosovo. This is the, the, the negotiations going on right now in Brussels. Why are they limiting your space of work if you work so well with them? I wouldn't say that they're limiting it at all. In fact, I think what they want is greater control and ownership of it. You have to understand that SPRK is a relatively new institution. It uh, was brought into effect by legislation not long ago, three or four years ago. So the point is, if you've ever owned a new car, everyone wants to drive it. And uh, this is the effect. This is a very good vehicle for moving forward on organized crime terrorism. And, and it is natural that the minister and the state prosecutor wants to be involved. And they are involved. They absolutely are involved. I can understand their desire to take greater control. But they are control. involved in trying to contain it or control it. They want uh, you to be replaced by a Kosovo boss who will tell local prosecutors what cases to go for and not to go for, who would set the agenda. This is what they want, to speak bluntly. And, and so they should. Uh, the point is that day is coming. You know, it, it's often said that um, uh, internationals are like cigarettes. You can get addicted to them. So the point is we can't stay here forever. I can't stay forever, and I recognize that. I have my own country with its own problems that I need to get back to eventually. I am on secondment, or I am borrowed entity from uh, Canada and the United Kingdom. The point is I have to go back sometime. 
and there has to be a transition, and that transition is starting now. That's why you're hearing the state prosecutor, the minister, and other people talk about taking local ownership, and I agree with that. It has to be a process. There has to be a transition. How long that transition takes is a matter of mechanics, and that's uh, what we're going through. But what's being discussed is not uh, per international prosecutors leaving completely. This sounds all very nice and politically correct, but in the end of the day, we know that we Kosovars need international uh, prosecutors for the next uh, few years to come. But the question is, really, I want an honest answer whether you and your colleagues are ready to work under an agenda set by a local chief prosecutor who has been uh, 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 institutions that have been criticized for being politically influenced, not having enough guts to deal with high, high level cases, which a spurk has come out recently, and I can give you examples of that. Um, are you ready to work under, um, under such local bosses? Okay, I think your question is slightly unfair. We already work under the general direction of the state do prosecutor. You? Yes, I this do. This is not what they say when we ask them. They say, you're the boss, you're being modest here. Come on. If you read the law in SPRK, it says the head of SPRK works under the general direction of the chief state prosecutor. And that's the law, and that is true. He generally directs the office of the SPRK. Now, we know Kosovo has great papers, great letters, but in reality, we know as citizens of Kosovo, viewers of these programs have been begging local prosecutors to do, to take on key big cases and not let people, certain powerful people be above the law, and that has not happened. We cannot uh, yeah. deny this. Look, I understand the frustration. You need to understand that Kosovo has come a very long way in terms of prosecutions, investigations, in a very short time. I know there's a great appetite for ruling out corruption, handling organized crime, terrorism, war crimes. I understand that completely. But this is a process. These are very complex issues and investigations. They involve forensics, they involve witnesses, they involve protected witnesses. You can Tell me about progress. I really want to hear about it. Tell me concrete cases that the locals have dealt with that are big, uh, big high-profile cases? Well, there have been. I don't speak for the state prosecutor, and I don't speak with the basic prosecutor. Why? Prosecutor's you work office. under him, according to you? I, I work for SBRK, and I speak for SBRK. I, I'm permitted to do that. The law says In I can SPRK, do that. In SBRK, you have local prosecutors yes, that we you do. oversee. Tell me about some of their cases. Uh, mm -hmm. Are they soft and, and safe cases no, or serious? No, they're not. There's some very serious cases that are being handled by local SBRK in our office. You also have to understand is that local SBRK work directly with internationals on mixed team investigations and prosecutions in war crimes, in organized crime, in terrorism, money laundering. They work with us. These are our colleagues. Really? We, yes, really. We the have monitors, Mr. Rattel. We have 15, mm. Bern has 15 monitors in courts all over Kosovo. We've been mm. monitoring EULEX trials, among others, and we rarely see locals as part of EULEX team, especially on cases of war crimes. Tell me one war crimes case when a local prosecutor has gone together with an international prosecutor? They do go together. They go together every day. They're in the office going together and working on investigations. Not in public. It is very difficult. Not in you, court. It is very difficult to get to that point, and we are getting to that point. All right, There will come a time very soon, we hope in the coming weeks and months, that public prosecutors with SBRK, local SBRK, will go to court on war crimes with internationals. We're hoping for that day, we are looking for the opportunity, and it will happen. How can that day come when you've had moments when you were starting to deliver with cases coming out with cases the public's expected? You've had um, uh, comments from the politicians such as those uh, from Kosovo's prime ministers who in November 2012, uh, the actions of detaining Fatmir Limay, he called EULEX sneaky, insulting and offensive, while the chief of PDK's caucuses in assembly, Adem Grabovsi, he proposed legislative moves to, re to remove EULEX's executive powers. How can your local colleagues ever hope that under such, under such uh, even legislative initiative to limit uh, EULEX's powers that they're going to shine and be allowed to do their work? Well, I can tell you, first of all, first, I, I barely recognize those names. So mm -hmm. those statements and whoever they are that made those statements. Oh, your local colleagues will well, I don't know those people, Kosovo's to tell you the truth, minister. I'm not concerned with them. And the local SPRK are learning to follow my lead, which is not to be concerned with that. 
there is an independent judiciary and an independent prosecution service being built in Kosovo. You have to give it some breathing space. You have to give it some time. It is taking time, but time. we are moving ahead. 14 years. We've been waiting for 14 years. Do you think this is too little time? Just tell me because we want to know how much time do you think they need? Are we talking about another decade, another two years? What are we talking about? How much time? We're talking about right now a critical phase where SPRK is in transition. There's no doubt that we need, because we cannot stay forever, we have to transition SPRK to local authority, have local persons running SBRK and have local prosecutors taking the lead on many of these, cri these crimes, including war crimes, which is extremely difficult. It is extremely difficult in any country. So we are, but it is a process. You cannot just flick the switch overnight and expect the internationals to drop away and for the locals to take 100% of the responsibility. That would be grossly unfair, both by the internationals and to the locals. Give me examples when they've been even 10% involved uh, or 50% yeah. involved, because we're talking about now nuances. You're saying it's not overnight. We weren't expecting overnight. You've been mm -hmm. here, EULEX, for three years. Which cases have been done together, sensitive cases? And give me a, a clear example of locals going to court with you on big, high-profile okay. cases. You have to understand that 90% of the work that SPRK does is investigation, all right? So the prosecutor receives a complaint, he has a public duty to file a ruling of investigation and conduct investigation. 90% of our time is taken up with investigations. 10% of our work is in court. And I can tell you that at SPRK, local prosecutors are helping us with these investigations, as are local KP, local police, which I have to tell you are incredibly important, incredibly talented police. Fine, but the credit is being taken by you then. And the public has no confidence that you that's, have local police as a background that, doing that, this. That's absolutely correct. The trouble is, is that the longer I stay here, the more credit I receive and the less credit that the locals get. This is part of the problem. And this is part of the reason you see a lot of local authorities pushing forward and wanting to take some level of control and ownership of SBRK. I totally understand that. So what you're saying is a local prosecution is ready to take on leadership of SPRK and it will still do serious big cases that will chase people, very powerful people like you did in the past three years. Samil Ushtaku, mayor of Skenderaj, Jabir Jarku, mayor of Kachanik, Ramadan Muya, mayor of Prizren, uh, the Nazim Blasa case which implicated key elites in the, in the current political sphere. The local guy heading Spurk would be able to do that? It's just like this. Let's go back to the vehicle. You buy a new car. You no, have no. Answer to me whether a guy, a local person, guy or girl, would be able to actually stand in front of uh, everybody and say, we will go ahead with these very powerful people. We will take even the powerful people. That is the task that we are conducting right now. We are trying to get to the point where we can get to that. You just can't get in the vehicle and drive the car no, tomorrow. The task that we're doing right now is uh, Minister of Justice and Mr. Kabashi trying to push for uh, controlling uh, the international prosecutors who are privately thinking about uh, not, not taking this kind of setup in the future if Spurk has to work under a local judge. I, I have to say, I, I find that statement slightly unfair. Yeah. I, I don't think that that's their ambit. Okay. What, what would is you happen work? Would you, can we see you a year from today? Will we see Jonathan Rattel still <laughs> in Kosovo? Very curious. Your personal career, are you looking for another job or are you committed to stay under a local leadership? I can tell you, I very much enjoy being in Kosovo. Right now, I, I as you are, I absolutely do. Boss. It is incredibly challenging. It's a great place to be. Uh, as a prosecutor, it's a target-rich environment. So I have to say, I enjoy being here. I didn't ask here. whether you're enjoying. It's fine. It's great. You enjoy it. Um, but are you going to be here a year from now, whatever mandate changes of the spark? That depends on a myriad of things. It includes, I serve as a prosecutor at the pleasure of the state prosecutor, as I serve as a past prosecutor in Canada or elsewhere. I serve at the pleasure of the minister and the state prosecutor, as I do in every country that I've been in. That includes Bosnia, Canada, the UK, Iraq, or wherever if, I have been. If a local heads a spark, would you work as, a, as an international prosecutor? 
yes, that is being talked about and we are going to work out the mechanics of how that's going to happen, but mm -hmm. that will take time. Mm -hmm. um, you are a well-known prosecutor here, especially because of Medica's case. And if there was a local person on your team on the Medica's case with all that really very remarkable investigation, investigating countries, uh, four or five countries discovering networks of criminals from Turkey, Israel, witnesses in Moldova and Kosovo, if someone, how many locals have been in your team uh, working with you on that case? Uh, we can talk about the Medicus case to a degree because mm -hmm. it's uh, now uh, a, a verdict has been rendered, although it's yes. not final. I can tell you that the Medicus case started with Kosovo police. It was Kosovo border police who started that investigation mm -hmm. and internationals had nothing to do with it. I can also By tell accident. We know how it happened. Many the guy things. died, Ma uh, the guy just fainted in the airport. Mm -hmm. Of course it started. Kosovo police there was is a, in the airport. a triggering event, but KP picked it up and KP was the one who cordoned off that clinic and KP, Trafficking in Human Beings, THB, they took that investigation forward. They did the nuts and bolts of extremely important work of seizing evidence, uh, uh, closing the clinic and moving forward to investigation. It, uh, to so tell you great. the truth. KP is great, but no local prosecutor picked on the KP investigation. Uh, it was you who took over the case. That's not totally true. I wasn't here and until literally yes. 2010. Yes. The clinic was searched in 2008. The point is, is that UNMIC had conduct of the investigation and the prosecution, and I mm -hmm. arrived in 2010, and at that point I assumed conduct of it. But I have to tell you, there so has been a any, lot of local anything... involvement in that case. Yeah. Not just KP, but the Ministry of Health Inspectorate. So we the... followed that case, we monitored the case. With you, there was no local legal officer or uh, a prosecutor next to you uh, learning the trade from the best. There was nobody I, like that. I have to say that, that that's not true. There are a lot of people in SBRK in the office who worked on that case and they learned a lot. It is true that- Why in, you didn't take them to court because with you? Because at that time, you have to understand, in 2010, the level of prosecutors in SBRK was much less than it was. The capacity was much less. It was very difficult on an SBRK ULEX prosecution to have that kind of resource. They have their own cases. We are trying to mix those cases with ours. That's all. What we've seen through the court monitoring is even when you have a judges, trial panel of judges, the local judge acts like a doll. I'm sorry to, to use this expression, but it's totally inactive, pose, puts no question, is there just, the impression is, is there just to uh, fill a number. I, again, I think that's slightly unfair. The point is, is that on all these panels, there are three judges. Name me three active judges who actually took initiative, asked questions, were great during the yeah, international I, I can only talk about the cases that mm -hmm. I have been involved in. I haven't, tell me your cases. I can tell you that the Medicus trial panel was extremely active, all members of them. And that it's unfair to say that local judges are not active. They were extremely active in that case. And I felt many times going to court mm -hmm. extremely challenged, not just by the internationals, but by the local judge also. He was very active, I can tell you that. Aren't you trying to paint a bit of a pink picture here? No, absolutely not, because no. I remember the feeling of walking into that courtroom facing his questions. Yes, but uh, there's no uh, top politician, key thing, no top politician has been ever uh, prosecuted by a local prosecutor. Uh, Why Ukrugova couldn't be done by a local prosecutor? I just want to know this. Uh, again, your, your question is, is slightly unfair in the sense that what you see is the end result, and you're asking why is it yeah. that the local prosecutor did not take care that case forward. Local police, local investigators, and local prosecutors have been involved in that investigation for a long period of time. But I the public doesn't have this information. We see the end result. I'm sorry, we see the yeah, end result. I, so I and know we that. want and the end results of the public having growing the faith on a local prosecutor, it matters a lot. It, the faith is not growing because we don't see them active. We don't see our own professionals guarding their uh, and profession. I agree with you, the optics of that we are working to change. That's the transition. You need to understand that at SBRK there are 110 staff and there are only at present 14 internationals. So do the math. SBRK is largely comprised of local authority and local experts. I just happen to be the exception to the rule. We are trying to move them forward. We're trying to get prosecutors into court, and that is a process, as I indicated to you. Well, the maths, if you look at it like that, maths say that there should be much more delivery on the local prosecution front. That's the next stage.
what, when will this stage uh, be, when can we see the, the, the reaps of this next stage? You'll see it now. It's, it's starting to happen now. We are, are working more and more in mixed team. We're having local prosecutors work with internationals and we're encouraging and we will have local prosecutors working in court with internationals soon. I want to talk you, about... You have to understand, it's just not a matter in your theory that these prosecutors and judges are afraid to stand up. That's not true. What is Some true, of them then? are extremely... What is there are technical reasons. I Tell don't me. speak. I don't speak local language. They, some of them, don't speak English, although most of them do. Yes. The problem is, is that working together, in order for me to talk to the other prosecutors going to court with me, I have to have a translator present. That's difficult. So, on a difficult, complex investigation, it's human so nature. There's that you... nothing more serious than just a translation, a lost in translation type of argument. They, otherwise, they are very brave to come out in front of uh, powerful mayors and deal with it and go home. Are they ready to do that? I think they will be ready very soon, yes. Um, I want to talk a little bit about transparency and the kind of standards you set up, whether you stay or go. Uh, people look, to, look up to you, Lex, to bring some uh, e EU principles on this. And, and um, we find that, um, that there are obstructions to transparency when we, when we ask for documents such as indictments, which should be public. Um, the cost of institutions don't allow them to be public, but the same with EULEX prosecutors also are transparent and transparent about. Um, you know that by law, indictments should be public, but you, we cannot get hold of them. Why is it so complicated for all indictments to be public, to be given to journalists? Okay, now you have my agreement. <laughs> I do agree with you on this point. After the filing of an indictment, the investigation is terminated. It comes to an end. That's what the law says. And on confirmation of that indictment, in my view, that indictment is a public document. It belongs to the public because the public prosecutor has filed it. So I do agree with you. On confirmation, that document should be readily it's available. It's not enough to agree. Why don't you put it online then if you it's, agree? You have to understand, when the prosecutor files it in the court registry, it becomes part of the court process. The prosecutor at that point loses control of the indictment. It now is with the court. So it is an if obligation. If you really want to be proactive, you as prosecutors can put it on your website, EULEX yeah. website, which is, has decisions, is very full. Why but can't it have but this? The, but the indictment, you have to understand, you're forgetting once again, the indictment does not belong to EULEX. It belongs to the people. The indictment is a, filed by a public the, the prosecutor. The people that you are advising. Have you advised, because your role and mandate is to advise, how many times have you advised them, the court registry, to put these uh, indictments online for all of us to access them? You have to, as I said before, it's not my job to advise or tell the court what to do. No? I don't do that. No, I don't. What it's I not do, the EULEX prosecutor's role to advise? Not the court. The court does what it does. Once I file the indictment, that process for the prosecutor is largely over, and we take the I'm talking the about your document, the, uh, the document that you mm -hmm. as a prosecutor yeah. uh, file. I, I think, it could be easier than that, I, I think you're, you're, you're attempting to make it more simplistic than it is. Yes. Once the indictment is filed, the prosecutor gives that indictment to the court, it becomes part of the court process. It's up to the court to do and decide when the indictment becomes public. I do agree with you, however, those indictments should, as a matter of course, during that process, be made available to the public. That's Why true. Why should justice be not simplified for the public? It's a complex process. There are defendant rights, there, there are defense counsel involved, there are witnesses, protected witnesses, a very complex process. I do agree, however, there needs to be more transparency in the courts, including, in my view, more access by the public and by the press. The law says these courtrooms are open to the public and the press, and mechanically they should be open. You're going to get, in very short months, the new Justice Palace. And I have to tell you, I have toured that facility. I can tell you that that is at international standard. That facility, built by Kosovo, with assistance from the EU and what other are, funds, is a Why would a building fantastic... change a transparency? It does. I can only tell really? you, because judges and prosecutors, they need a place to work. They no, need a proper facility. Putting, giving the indictment to the public that is not uh, limited with what building you are in. No, but that's just one, one indicia of, of endemic difficulties in the system. If you don't fund, if you don't have a history of, of justice reform, of proper uh, support for judges and prosecutors in courts, you have great difficulty in moving forward with this. The Justice Palace 
in my view, is the best opportunity moving forward. But the lack to of advance. transparency is because of uh, not a fancy office? No, it's not that. The lack of transparency is part of a complex problem, part of which is proper funding for courts, judges, prosecutors. Do you know it's a complex been issue. Millions, and I'm really talking uh, with PACS here, millions of euros and dollars being poured into archiving and modernizing and reforming the rule of law here, and, and especially archiving, and this hasn't happened yet because there's, yeah. there's an interest. Let's say the, 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 there's yeah. the conspiracies will think and the public maybe is led to believe that there is interest in keeping these indictments hidden because you actually want to file it, but you, don't know, you do not want to ruin the reputation maybe of the people you're filing uh, indictments well, against. That, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. No? It doesn't make any sense. Why would I file an indictment in, in a, in a, in a, by a public prosecutor's office and mm -hmm. try to keep it secret because I don't want people to see the work that I'm doing? That doesn't make any sense exactly. to me at all. Exactly. This is my question. Well, it's not the case. It's just not the case. The problem is it's not a... It is a case because we cannot access these documents. And we, we work only with this. I, you know, you're a prosecutor. We, we just yeah. access documentation to write stories. The, the, the indictment becomes public on confirmation, in my view, and you should have access to the document. But the document at that point is filed with the court, and that's the area that you should be looking at. On the same topic, what has recently happened is that there are currently only six court decisions online in, in the EULEX website. Before, there were many court decisions, which EULEX has removed from on, online. Do you know why is that? I, I don't know that myself. I can tell you that uh, having court decisions online is part of the transparency process. I, I don't know that myself. I have to say I do not speak for you, Lex. As you know, I work for SPRK, which I've indicated is a local institution. Um, run by you, an international. For um, now. <laughs> the, but the only, do you understand the importance, the only institutional memory w which we will be left with in 10 years from now, after, because, you know, we're talking about 10 years ago, UNMIC dealt with cases, we don't have their decisions online somewhere where a uh, future, possibly good uh, Kosovo prosecutors want to access and to learn from case studies of these examples. And we cannot learn because okay, only six right. decisions are online after three years of yeah. work. You have six decisions to show for. I, I have to say I agree with you mm -hmm. that there should be a repository, a, some kind of a public record of decisions, court decisions, verdicts, indictments, etc. You're absolutely correct. But this is not because the internationals or local authorities are trying to hide their work. This is because historically, this has not been part of the legal tradition here. Why As are you here, you're international, to change, the w to reform what has been historically yes, doing, been done true. badly? But you have to understand, legal traditions and legal systems are bound in history. I'm talking they about ULEX website. I'm talking about yes, a website that was set up three years ago when you yeah. came. It's not long communist uh, tradition of, um, of, of secrecy we're talking about. Not our institutions. EULEX judgments are not online. Yeah, but all those judgments work within the local system. That's, that's the point. So and, locals and came in and said, don't do this because we don't put them. You make us look too bad. So uh, please start working as bad as we are, as untransparently as we are. Well, I, I don't agree with that statement. No. no. But do you agree with what I'm saying, that how it looks like from outside, people who are trying to get to know I, what are the decisions, what, what I, get to learn you know, about it? What, what, I'm, what I'm beginning to understand from Bern and, and perhaps mm -hmm. other press, that you are frustrated with the lack of access. Mm -hmm. And I do understand that. And what I say is that that is a mm -hmm. systemic problem. There is no particular villain in this. This is a historical problem. It is changing. It's going to take time. Talking about villains. Um, we know we have the black sheep among uh, Kosovo institutions in terms of um, judicial system has been by many uh, reports being called that it's politically influenced, that it's corrupt. Uh, there's uh, many examples that we have put out in, in justice in Kosovo when we've caught proof of, of bribery among the local courts. But um, would, you, would you confess that, there, that EULEX has its own black sheep? Uh. I'm here to prosecute on behalf of SPRK. As I indicate, I don't speak for ULEX, either in their defense or against them. I am a local prosecutor. If you read the law, that's exactly what I do. And we will, as our public duty is, investigate any crime by any person. So, Are you guys paid enough I to do the job you're doing? I know what I am paid to be here. Mm -hmm. For me, I find that sufficient. I can only answer for myself. 
Um, is that is it um, is it a secret to know how much international? I don't know. I don't know what other people. I know what I make. If you're asking me that, I know exactly what I make. Is, is what I tell you, I will not tell you. you so will don't not ask tell that us. question. Um, have, we're talking a little bit about. I mean, I want to know just because the local prosecutors complain that compared to uh, you get a job well done because you're paid much better and uh, you 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 you've got more cars and you've got more you're legal correct. officers. You're is absolutely that correct. True? And, 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 and do you know the price of buying a house in Vancouver is? It's mm -hmm. astronomical. So there you go. And what's the price of buying a Porsche? Probably about the same. So I have to tell you, it's a very expensive. I, look, I come from a, a country... I know you have a second-hand Porsche. Am I, I right? That is correct. I come from a country which has mm -hmm. a very high standard of living and very high cost and very high income tax. We hit 40% income tax bracket. But I don't think you're here to talk about what it is, the income tax bracket in Canada or the United mm -hmm. Kingdom. So... There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with driving Porsche. I, I just know that you have a mission that is trying to stand up for certain things. What does it say for the SPRK, the Spurk head driving a Porsche? <laughs> it, it doesn't say much, to tell you the truth. What, what, what private vehicle I drive, I happen to drive one back home in Canada too. So if you want to know, there's two of them. Final question, uh, Mr. Rattel. There are reports that special tribunal in the EU is allegedly being formed within uh, to deal with Kosovo war crimes. What do you know about this? I know about as much as you do, to tell you the truth. Um, and I really can't comment on another prosecution service that's out there, and I shouldn't really. It's not fair for me to do that. I don't work The local it. press has reported it. Is it going to happen? Is it something that's being talked about? It's being talked about, yes, yeah. because local press, like you and I, we both mm -hmm. read in the local press, but that's about all that I know. Mm -hmm. Okay, for your personal work, finally, you have been investigating eight other official suspects. This is what you said after you, the medical trial, the first verdict was, uh, was delivered, that you're going to investigate eight other official suspects, amongst whom officials from the parliament in the medical case. Um, you have been considering to broaden the investigation. Have you done so, so far? When can we see Medicus 2? Okay, it's public knowledge and has been part of a press statement that there is a second investigation on Medicus. That is true. And as you know, as part of the ongoing investigations, as in all SPRK investigations, we do not identify suspects as a general rule. There are a number of suspects. The investigation is ongoing. It is taking a complex, sensitive investigation, and we are moving forward with it. Are we it. going to see indictment uh, early or late this year? <laughs> I can tell you that I have a statutory limit of two years. So you will okay. find it within that two years or not. Mr. Rattel, thank you for being in Yetan Kosovo. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.